The fourth proposal um, is uh, probably a, a, a less significant one than the others, although it would be quite significant for the insurers. And this is that we clarify the requirements that we have in the qualifying insurers agreement about the circumstances in which insurers should be passing information to the SRA, particularly around where um, they uh, uncover the fact that in proposal forms um, firms have misrepresented information or that premiums haven't been paid. Um, so what we are trying to seek here is that where insurers in the operation of the insurance relationship with the firm identify significant regulatory risks for us, that they flag those up for us so that we can um, talk to the firms involved and begin to uh, get behind some of that information. It's important for us that when the SRA board um, considers the uh, decisions it will need to make uh, in the spring of this year, that they have due regard to their obligations under the equalities legislation. So for us, the uh, understanding the impact of these proposals um, is absolutely key, so the SRA uh, board is making sound decisions. So we've already published with the consultation paper a draft equalities impact, um, and where people are responding to the consultation, we would very much welcome views both on the consultation proposals and on the draft impact assessment to ensure that um, the uh, final decision is as sound as possible. So in terms of the single renewal date, um, our initial conclusion is that we feel that um, this is likely to have a positive impact on small firms, uh, which will indirectly affect one and two partner black and minority ethnic and one partner female firms. So we think uh, that proposal is likely to have a beneficial effect. In terms of the uh, financial institutions exclusion, Again, we believe there's a possible positive impact for small non-convincing firms um, who are likely to benefit from potentially reduced premiums and the fact that insurers are likely to be more confident to offer insurance. There may be a possible negative impact for small firms if a response to these proposals is that there are fewer firms on lenders' panels because insurers react by um, operating this exclusion more than they might in which case it's unlikely that lenders will work with firms who do not have the relevant PII cover. So that's a, a key issue for us in, in understanding the impact of that proposal. The uh, issue of the increased controls on the uh, ARP is that there is a real issue for us here in that there is a, a disproportionately large number of uh, BME owned and controlled firms in the ARP at the moment, and that is a, a, a significant disproportion. So in considering the future of the ARP and in considering the consequences of reducing the uh, period you can stay in the ARP for 12 to 6 months, this is a key issue for us um, because as we know that there are a disproportionately large number of BME firms in the ARP, then we need to consider this impact. And in terms of um, the size of that disproportionality, um, it, is, it is quite stark, so that, that is a big issue for us. In terms of the passage of information from insurers, um, we haven't identified any particular impact at this point. I said earlier on that we had split the uh, consultation paper into two parts, and I want to talk briefly about um, some of the issues that we're seeking views on um, for, for changes potentially from October 2012 onwards. And I need to make clear at this stage what we are doing very much is seeking views because some of the issues here will require, for example, further work uh, by us to understand how we might frame any specific proposal. So views at this stage, if we do intend to make any of these changes at some point in the future, there will need to be a more detailed and specific consultation on them. So the first issue is that um, moving on from the exclusion of financial institution would be to permit the exclusion of what's described here as non-individual clients, but Charles River described this as potentially permitting the exclusion of all corporate clients. The rationale for this in um, the way Charles River looked at it was that we should be focusing our regulatory protections on clients who aren't able to protect themselves. 
So they would say that where you have sophisticated clients who are quite capable, firstly, of ensuring that they instruct solicitors who have the abilities they require, and secondly, you have clients who are able to check and ensure that solicitors have the appropriate cover in place, they don't need regulatory protection. So what we're seeking views on is, is moving past just permitting the exclusion of financial institutions from the terms of cover to permitting all corporates to be excluded from cover. Secondly, we're seeking further views on um, the real future of the ARP. Um, at the moment, the ARP carries out a number of roles, but, but with a key role for it is it's the provider of insurance of last resort, and it does that by actually providing policies of qualifying insurance. One of the issues that we're, we're raising is should we end that role? Should we make it the case that firms either have to fi find cover in the open market or they have to do, um, not carry on in practice in that current way? So again, that, that, that's going to be a key issue for us, and, and that's why we are um, seeking further views on it at this stage. The third one is, is again, a, a, a quite a significant issue. At the moment, the assigned risks pool is uh, funded uh, both by the premiums that firms in the ARP pay, um, but that only pays for a very, very small amount, a small proportion of the cost of the ARP. So, for example, for the 2008-9 insurance year, the losses for the ARP amount to some £45 million. Pounds. A small proportion of that is paid for through the premium. The balance is paid for by the insurers who provide uh, this kind of cover. Um, we think that is causing some significant difficulties in the market. It's, um, it's making a number of insurers unwilling to enter this market. It's clearly making a number of the insurers um, try to limit the proportion of the market that they have. So normally in the operational market, you'd expect the people providing the service to be keen to increase their market share. What we're seeing in this market is that insurers are actually trying to constrain their market share because the greater share of the market they have, the greater their exposure to ARP costs. And we think this is having some, some very negative effects in the operation of the market overall. So we're seeking views on changing the way in which that is funded. Um, Either uh, our preferred option at the moment, the one we're seeking views on particularly, is that we move to fund the costs of the ARP through a direct levy on the profession. If we uh, did go down that route and if we stopped the ARP being a provider of policies of qualifying insurance, we would uh, then need to consider whether it made sense to have one separate fund for funding the ARP and one separate fund for funding the compensation fund. So we're seeking views on whether we should combine those into a single fund. At the moment, the uh, agreements that the qualifying insurers sign up to means that um, if um, premiums are not paid by firms or if they uncover fraud or misrepresentation in, in the policy proposal forms, they are unable to cancel the policies. Now, that is very unusual in the normal insurance market. If you take out insurance for your car or you insure your home and you don't pay your premiums, insurers cancel policies. In order to ensure client protection, the tradition here has been that insurers are unable to cancel those policies. And um, Charles River questioned whether that was appropriate and whether, again, that was causing some negative impacts in the operation of the market. And, and finally, in terms of the proposals for 2012 onwards, um, we will be considering what the appropriate formulas should be for um, contributions to the compensation fund. That's not something we talk about in great deal in this consultation, but it's an issue that we'll want to return to so that we can ensure that we've done a fundamental review, not just of the PII arrangements, but also of the other element that provides client financial protection, and, that, and that's the compensation fund. We've also begun to look at the equality impact of, of, of those particular issues for 2012 onwards. Um, but obviously, because what we're doing at this stage is, is largely seeking views rather than making specific proposals, um, we would need to do a lot more work in this area should we come for, forward with specific proposals. So you will see in the slides, I've just set out some of the issues that we are already uh, beginning to identify there.